Could an underwater giant lurking just off the Oregon coast be on the verge of an eruption? Recent massive swelling detected beneath the seafloor has scientists sounding the alarm. But what does it mean for the Pacific Northwest? Is this volcano simply shifting? Or is it building toward a spectacular underwater eruption that could reshape the landscape? The Axial Seamount is an active underwater volcano located about 480 kilometers, 300 miles, off the coast of Oregon, along the Juan de Fuca Ridge in the Pacific Ocean. It is one of the most active and thoroughly studied submarine volcanoes in the world. This volcanic feature rises approximately 700 meters, 2,300 feet, above the surrounding seafloor, with its summit resting about 1,400 meters, 4,600 feet, below sea level. Structurally, the axial seamount has a broad, shield-like appearance typical of basaltic volcanoes and features a central caldera, an oval depression roughly 3 kilometers, 2 miles wide, and 8 kilometers, 5 miles, long. This caldera formed due to previous eruptions and the subsequent collapse of the summit. Classified as a submarine shield volcano, the axial seamount is primarily composed of basaltic lava. Shield volcanoes are characterized by their gently sloping sides, formed by low-viscosity lava that spreads over long distances. The axial seamount is located at the intersection of the Juan de Fuca Ridge and the cobb eichelberg Seamount Chain, making it part of a geologically active region defined by tectonic plate interactions. The volcano's formation is linked to its position on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, a divergent tectonic boundary where the Pacific Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate are pulling apart. As magma rises from the mantle through the rift, it cools and solidifies to create new oceanic crust, and over time, repeated eruptions have built the axial seamount. The eruptive history of the axial seamount includes several significant events, with recorded eruptions in 1998, 2011, and 2015. These eruptions were all preceded by measurable swelling of the seafloor caused by magma accumulating beneath the volcano. For example, during the 2015 eruption, scientists observed inflation of the caldera followed by rapid deflation as magma was released providing valuable insights into the dynamics of submarine eruptions. After nearly a decade of silence since its last eruption in 2015, the underwater volcano began to stir once more in late 2023. Subtle yet unmistakable signs of activity emerged, marked by a steady rise in the seafloor that accelerated significantly by the beginning of 2024. The swelling reached an astonishing rate of approximately 25 centimeters per year by mid-2024, a striking signal of magma accumulating beneath the surface. This inflation did not occur in isolation. Clusters of small earthquakes rippled through the region, each one a faint echo of the magma's restless movements deep within the Earth's crust. These seismic tremors, though minor, painted a vivid picture of the subterranean forces at play, hinting at the dynamic processes shaping the volcano's resurgence. As the year progressed, the once escalating activity began to level off. By the latter half of 2024, both the inflation rate and seismic activity had stabilized, providing a cautious sense of relief. Several mechanisms could contribute to triggering another eruption at the axial seamount, each intricately tied to the complex interplay of geological forces in the region. At the heart of the process lies magma accumulation. Deep within the Earth's crust, molten rock rises from the mantle, pooling within the magma chamber beneath the volcano. As this chamber fills, the overlying rock and seafloor are forced upward, causing noticeable swelling or inflation. This buildup of pressure increases the likelihood of fractures forming in the volcanic edifice, creating pathways for magma to ascend to the surface. If the pressure surpasses the strength of the surrounding rock, an eruption becomes imminent. Hydrothermal activity further complicates the system's stability. The axial seamount is home to hydrothermal vents, where seawater seeps into the crust, becomes superheated by magma, and re-emerges laden with minerals. 
this process introduces significant heat and chemical reactions into the volcanic structure, weakening the surrounding rock and increasing the potential for failure. Moreover, the interaction of fluids and heat can generate localized pressure changes, which may further destabilize the system. The tectonic environment in which the axial seamount resides is another critical factor. Positioned along the Juan de Fuca Ridge, a divergent boundary between the Juan de Fuca and Pacific Plates, the region is characterized by continuous seafloor spreading. This spreading creates fractures and faults within the crust, providing conduits through which magma can travel. Periodic movement along these fractures, often accompanied by small earthquakes, can facilitate the upward migration of magma, making an eruption more likely. Seismic activity plays a dual role in this dynamic system. On one hand, the small earthquakes generated by magma movement or tectonic stresses offer a warning sign of potential activity. On the other hand, larger seismic events can serve as direct triggers for an eruption. Sudden shifts in the Earth's crust, such as those caused by an earthquake, can disturb the delicate equilibrium of the magma chamber, forcing magma toward the surface. Compounding these factors is the influence of the nearby Cascadia Subduction Zone, CSZ, located to the east of the axial seamount. The CSZ is a convergent boundary where the Juan de Fuca plate is subducting beneath the North American plate. This massive subduction system is capable of producing megathrust earthquakes and tsunamis with profound implications for the axial seamount. Stress induced by subduction could alter the regional stress field, indirectly influencing the magma chamber by either compressing or fracturing the overlying rock. Such changes might accelerate magma ascent or even trigger an eruption. Conversely, activity at the axial seamount could have implications for the CSZ. While the volcano's eruptions or seismic disturbances may not directly initiate a megathrust earthquake, they could generate localized stress changes that influence the behavior of faults within the subduction zone. Increased heat from volcanic activity may also affect the properties of the subducting plate, potentially altering the dynamics of the subduction process. Together, these mechanisms highlight the interconnected and precarious nature of geological forces in the Pacific Northwest. The axial seamount and the Cascadia subduction zone exist in a complex symbiosis, where the activity of one could reverberate across the other, demonstrating the intricate and volatile systems that shape the Earth's surface. Could a major eruption of the axial seamount cause a tsunami? Tsunamis are typically caused by the rapid displacement of large volumes of water, which can result from several mechanisms. These include large undersea earthquakes that displace the seafloor, underwater or coastal landslides triggered by volcanic activity or seismic events, the sudden collapse of a volcano's summit into its magma chamber, known as caldera collapse, or large explosive eruptions that eject significant material into the water. In the case of axial seamount, the most plausible trigger for a tsunami would be a significant structural collapse or a major landslide on the seamount's flanks. If such a collapse were to occur, the resulting displacement of the seafloor could generate powerful waves radiating outward. The sudden movement of massive amounts of sediment or volcanic material could push large volumes of water, potentially creating a tsunami capable of traveling across the ocean basin. Such events, though rare, have been observed in other underwater volcanic systems. For example, landslides on the flanks of volcanic islands like Hawaii have generated localized tsunamis in the past. The impact of a tsunami triggered by axial seamount would depend on the scale of the collapse, the depth of the water at the site, and the proximity of vulnerable coastal areas. While this scenario is theoretically possible, it is important to note that axial seamount's eruptions have historically been effusive, involving the gentle flow of lava rather than explosive activity or significant structural destabilization. Additionally, extensive monitoring of the seamount has not indicated signs of imminent large-scale collapse. 
However, continued observation is essential to understanding and mitigating any potential risks associated with this dynamic submarine volcano. Beneath the waves, hidden in the depths of the world's oceans, lie some of the most powerful forces of nature, underwater volcanoes. Though shrouded in mystery, these geological giants have, on occasion, unleashed devastation that resonates through history. Among them, a few eruptions stand out, not just for their sheer force, but for the human stories tied to their aftermath. In 1883, the world bore witness to the cataclysmic eruption of Krakatoa, situated in the Sunda Strait between the islands of Java and Sumatra in Indonesia. The region is one of the most geologically active in the world, lying along the Pacific Ring of Fire and near the Sunda Megathrust Fault. This fault is a subduction zone where the Indo-Australian plate is being forced beneath the Eurasian plate. The trigger for Krakatoa's massive eruption was likely the buildup of pressure in its magma chamber, combined with structural instability caused by years of tectonic stress. When the caldera collapsed into the sea, it displaced vast amounts of water, unleashing tsunamis that obliterated coastal villages and killed over 36,000 people. The eruption itself sent shockwaves that circled the globe and ash-darkened skies for months, altering global weather patterns. Today, Anak Krakatau, the child of Krakatoa, has risen from the remnants of its parent and remains active. Its location near the Sunda Megathrust makes future eruptions not just possible, but probable, raising concerns about potential tsunamis. More than a century later, in 2018, Anak Krakatau demonstrated its power once again. The volcanic island, formed in the caldera left by the 1883 eruption, suffered a sudden flank collapse. This collapse was likely triggered by a combination of volcanic activity and structural instability. The rapid displacement of material into the sea generated a tsunami that struck the coasts of Java and Sumatra. Over 430 lives were lost, and thousands more were affected as waves swept away homes and infrastructure. Anak Krakatau continues to grow and remains closely monitored due to its unpredictable nature and the ever-present risk of another collapse or explosive eruption. Its proximity to densely populated areas makes it one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the region. But the story of underwater volcanoes is not confined to Southeast Asia. In the Aegean Sea, over three millennia ago, the eruption of Santorini's volcanic complex sent shockwaves through history. Known as the Thera eruption, this event was one of the largest volcanic eruptions in recorded history. It occurred at a complex system of faults where the African plate is being subducted beneath the Eurasian plate. The eruption likely began with the buildup of magma beneath the caldera, leading to explosive activity that ejected massive amounts of volcanic material into the atmosphere. This was followed by a catastrophic collapse of the caldera, which generated tsunamis that ravaged nearby islands, including Crete. These waves, coupled with the ash fallout, devastated the Minoan civilization and contributed to its decline. Santorini remains an active volcanic system, with periodic seismic activity and minor eruptions. While another major eruption is not imminent, the volcano is under constant surveillance due to its potential to impact the region. In modern times, technology allows us to witness and study these events like never before. In 2022, the eruption of Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai in the Pacific Ocean stunned the world. The volcano lies along the Tonga Kermadec subduction zone, where the Pacific plate is being pushed beneath the Indo-Australian plate. The eruption, triggered by rapid magma ascent and the mixing of water and magma, created an explosive force so powerful that it generated atmospheric shockwaves that circled the globe. Tsunamis radiated outward, affecting coastlines across the Pacific Ocean, with significant destruction in Tonga itself. Ash blanketed the region, contaminating water supplies and disrupting communication for weeks. Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai remains active, and while the volcano has partially collapsed, further eruptions are possible. 
the ongoing tectonic activity in the region underscores the potential for future events with global consequences. Likewise, in the Caribbean Sea, where the restless Kickham Jenny has stirred beneath the waves for centuries. This submarine volcano, located near Grenada, is one of the most active in the region. Discovered in 1939 during a dramatic eruption that sent plumes of ash and steam skyward, it hinted at the potential for much greater destruction. Positioned near the boundary of the Caribbean and North American tectonic plates, Kickham Jenny's eruptions could one day trigger a catastrophic tsunami threatening nearby islands. Its unpredictable nature keeps scientists on edge as they monitor its every tremor, knowing that the ocean conceals both its fury and its secrets. Farther south, along the Kermadec Arc in the South Pacific, lies Manawai Seamount, a dynamic submarine volcano that has reshaped itself repeatedly through explosive activity. In 2011, this hidden titan made its presence known when an eruption caused its summit to rise nearly 80 feet in a matter of days, a stark reminder of the raw, unchecked power beneath the ocean floor. Positioned near the Tonga Kermadec subduction zone, Manawai's eruptions are frequent, their seismic signals rippling through the region as warnings of its restless energy. In the Aegean Sea, Colombo, an underwater neighbor to the iconic Santorini volcano, carries a deadly legacy. In 1650, it erupted with violent force, ejecting pumice and volcanic gases that poisoned the waters and devastated marine life. The accompanying tsunami swept across nearby islands, claiming lives and leaving a lasting mark on the region's history. Colombo, like its counterpart Santorini, remains active, a ticking clock in the midst of the ancient Mediterranean. Its activity serves as a reminder of the enduring connection between the volcanic past and the present-day risks faced by coastal communities. The Mariana Arc in the Pacific is home to the enigmatic Daikoku Seamount, a volcano that holds a rare and remarkable feature, a lake of liquid sulfur, bubbling and otherworldly in its depths. Though it has not unleashed a catastrophic eruption, the constant seismic and hydrothermal activity in the region hints at a power waiting to be unleashed. Daikoku stands as a testament to the alien worlds hidden beneath our oceans, its sulfuric lake a symbol of the extraordinary conditions that exist far from human eyes. Not all underwater volcanoes remain hidden. In 1963, Surtsey emerged dramatically from the ocean near Iceland, born from an underwater eruption along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. If you found this video fascinating, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more captivating stories from the depths of our planet. Your support helps us bring more incredible content your way.